The 13th MPC Standing Committee convened its 29th session this week and just today passed a draft law against foreign sanctions. This law is expected to expand China's legal toolkit facing discriminatory measures imposed by foreign countries. How will this law work and what impact will it have? I'm pleased to be joined from Beijing by Einar Tengen, current affairs commentator, and also in Beijing by Wang Tong, chief reporter at the Global Times. Uh, Wang Tong, let me go to you and really get your thoughts on this piece of legislation. What can they do? Well, I think today this legislation is quite a game changer in terms of the uh, back and forth, the confrontation, the tension between China and some of these Western countries, uh, the U.S. in particular. Uh, this legislation basically uh, puts a, a legal foundation in China's uh, response or countermeasures against a increasing number of sanctions imposed by the U.S. and some other Western governments against Chinese entities and individuals. Uh, we have seen now, we have seen uh, the Chinese government, different departments, the, you know, the uh, Ministry of Commerce, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have taken uh, some uh, uh, actions, some countermeasures against some of these sanctions. However, there's no a national comprehensive legal uh, uh, a law that governs uh, these, uh, these actions. So now today we have this law which means that we have a legally binding uh, document that will put a comprehensive uh, uh, system in place so that China can take actions uh, in response to these sanctions. Uh, I think this is quite a uh, game changer again uh, because we have seen more and more uh, sanctions imposed by the U.S. and other governments. Uh, China needs, it is necessary for China to respond. However, this, uh, I also want to make it very clear, this is an anti-foreign sanction law. It's not foreign sanction law. So it will have to, uh, it will be uh, based on what the you know, foreign governments does in terms of sanctions. China never uh, imposes sanctions on uh, foreign entities, individuals at will. Uh, it will be, however, a defensive uh, mechanism uh, to respond to this, uh, these actions. Uh, also, deterrence, I think that's uh, the most important, significant uh, role of this law because uh, before, foreign governments may think they can take, uh, impose sanctions against China, China uh, and China might not respond. Now we have this law and they can be sure that China will respond in kind. Yeah, but many people, I assume, will be hard to, to convince, to be convinced. Uh, I can already imagine many Western commentators and headlines saying that China is getting more aggressive uh, with the passage of this law, you know, sanctioning foreign companies and foreign government. Is that the case, Einer? Well, yes, you can expect some sort of initial reaction, but uh, no one has actually seen all the details uh, in this uh, bill. And uh, quite frankly, it came out of this idea that the U.S. Uh, is trying to impose what they call long-arm jurisdiction, e.g. Uh, rules and laws made in Washington begin enforced uh, around the world. So uh, what China has done is said, look, if you want any information from Chinese companies, whether they're based in the U.S. or in China, and the information is here and processed here, you're going to have to go through a process. You're going to have to get our permission. And that's uh, true of uh, what the U.S. has done. Now, uh, China's response on this particular issue is based on the same thing uh, that the European Union imposed because they were also very concerned about long-arm jurisdiction uh, by uh, the U.S. government over their companies. But it does set up a, you know, pr uh, a kind of predicament for uh, especially American companies who are here because they are required because they're American to hand over data no matter where their operations are but they're going to have to get permission to do that from the Chinese government so this is an area which still needs to be worked out obviously this is uh, part of the tit for tat that's going on uh, you can expect more of it uh, today uh, Biden put in that he was going to uh, take away three of uh, Trump era um, uh, executive actions, and he was going to put another one in, creating new rules that will make it uh, more legally defensible for the government to impose these types of sanctions. So uh, this is not over yet. Uh, this is just uh, one more in, uh, one more episode in a Cold War that keeps going on. You know, you know Wang Chong, talking about long-arm jurisdiction, the case of Meng Wanzhou came to mind, uh, you know, a, a corporate Chinese CFO 
uh, was detained for years for allegedly violating America's sanctions against not China, but against Iran. Um, what do you think this piece of Chinese legislation, anti-Western sanctions law, can do when it comes to you know, long-arm jurisdiction? Well, uh, the most important thing it can do is deterrence. Uh, one, again, uh, because uh, you know we have seen more and more Western governments, not only the U.S. Uh, we have seen uh, Canada, the European, uh, the European Union, uh, Australia. All these countries are seeking to uh, are more, uh, let's say, more prone to uh, impose sanctions on China over a. Uh, a series of accusations on human rights and uh, you know uh, trade secrets, uh, so it, it you know they, it, it has really become a quite a, a, a serious uh, threat to Chinese uh, entities and individuals. And like you mentioned, we still have the CFO of Huawei in custody in Canada, not because he uh, she violated any law in Canada but the U.S. sanctions on Iran. It's not even U.S. law, it's a sanction, unilateral sanction, uh, uh, sanction against Iran. So uh, the long-arm uh, jurisdiction that uh, the Chinese officials have been spoken so uh, frequently is uh, real and is a threat to Chinese entities and uh, individuals. So with regard to this uh, legislation today, uh, I think uh, what Chinese government and the, uh, you know, wants to send a signal is that if you come to hurt Chinese interests uh, and hurt Chinese individuals, uh, you will, uh, China will respond in kind. Uh, yes, there will be some critics that say China is taking more aggressive. However, we have to go back and see the back and forth between China and U.S., the tit-for-tat uh, actions. China never once uh, took the uh, initiative to sanction uh, foreign entities or, uh, or individuals. Uh, not one foreign company so far has been uh, blacklisted or restricted somehow in uh, countermeasures against U.S. Uh, sanctions on hundreds of Chinese uh, businesses. I think that tells a very, uh, uh, you know, very clear uh, story that China is not seeking to punish anybody, especially business, uh, businesses in China that is abid abiding by the law. But if you come and hurt Chinese uh, uh, interests, yes, uh, China will respond. That's the message with this uh, legislation. Right. Einer, you worked in the field of law for you know, a long time. And uh, do you think China's passage of this piece of legislation uh, is setting a new precedent? Or you know, if you look at things around the world, there are precedents uh, around the world, um, you know, be it the EU or Russia, having similar uh, pieces of legislations. Well, no, China, China is actually a little late to the game. The EU uh, went forward, obviously, uh, you know, uh, Russia has done the same thing, a number of countries. Uh, there, there's real concern. I mean, the, the U.S. has used the SWIFT system. That's the banking system where money's exchanged in and out. Uh, and they've used that. That was always understood to be neutral, that it would never be used for political purposes. Uh, but starting with uh, Bush, then Obama, uh, and then uh, Trump, it has been increasingly used as a blunt instrument uh, to force uh, countries to obey uh, China's policy, I mean, the U.S. policy decisions. So if that continues, the, the U.S. is going to be um, a lot more, uh, you know, basically isolated because as people walk away fr from uh, this kind of, you know, uh, what they perceive as bullying behavior, uh, it could really have big consequences for the U.S., especially the U.S. dollar. Uh, because the SWIFT system uh, was integral to that. It was really the one, one big thing that was propping up uh, U.S. Uh, debt uh, relief, basically, because it kept the interest rates very, very low. Uh, but with increased debt, uh, with inflation, uh, with concerns about the U.S. Uh, actions and countries and regions kind of pulling away from that, uh, even with digital currency, et cetera, uh, this really does spell danger for the U.S., and I, I'm surprised yeah. that they don't see it. Right. Let's look at more concerns surrounding this piece of legislation, anti-Western sanctions law just passed by China's top legislature. Some have raised concerns that you know, this move might be counterproductive, saying such action is not conducive to attracting foreign investment or reassuring foreign companies that is doing business in China. They might feel increasingly worried and concerned and you know, somehow they can be used as sacrificial pawns in a game of politics. Um, Montong, how do you look at that concern? 
Uh, well, I think uh, that's uh, really misdirected. Uh, because w I think I would argue the opposite. What this legislation provides is a, per a certainty, is a per predictability. Because before, y uh, you know, usually Western governments, including the EU, impose sanctions on China, and then the uh, entire market, right, the business community, would uh, you know uh, speculate, would uh, raise concerns about potential reactions from China, from the Chinese government. And uh, you know what it does for bilateral ties with this piece of legislation, with this law, they can expect uh, what would China do if uh, uh, indeed their government uh, imposed sanctions against China. It would be very clear for them to uh, to you know judge the uh, the situations, the you know the uh, tensions. So I think uh, it, it's not. Uh, it's not counterproductive. It's actually helping the environment. And uh, now we have this uh, very turbulent, very uncertain times. This legislation actually provides a sense of uh, stability and predictability. Because you know, uh, again, this law is wants to tell these governments in deterrence or just a message that China will respond according to laws. And everybody can see reading these laws, not you know guessing or speculating. Uh, also, I have. I I want to point out, so far, again, China, with all the sanctions uh, imposed, China has never uh, imposed sanctions on specific, any specific business, U.S. or European or any other businesses. With all the thousands of uh, businesses operating in China and all the sanctions their governments have imposed. So I think the worry is uh, misguided. I think they should uh, feel... Uh, uh, you know, feel more uh, uh, reassured. Mm -hmm. Also, but I want to point out that uh, this law uh, will say that uh, those companies and entities, organizations that help aid uh, foreign governments in, uh, you know, uh, implementing their sanctions will be punished. I think so. They have to be also be clear. They're doing business in China. Uh, they have to abide them by Chinese law if they help their foreign uh, their governments to undermine Chinese interests. Yes, they will be punished, but for, all, for most of the companies, I think they should not be worried. Wang Chong, thank you for your perspectives, as always. And Einar Tengen, thank you very much.